Episode 3 of The Ark is quite terrifying, but also fairly satisfying. The Doctor, Stephen, and Dodo return to The Ark many years down the track, and they find that the Monoids have taken over as the um, guardians of the ship, rather than the humans. The humans now serve as the servant class, and the ship is almost at the Refusians planet, Refugius, and they're going to expect a warm welcome from these people, hopefully. This was a, a terrifying, kind of depressing episode in a sense. The I don't exactly know what the... I don't know how much history is explained. I think some of it gets... Maybe some of it gets revealed more in the fourth episode, but the Monoids talk about how the Guardians, you know, gave them the powers of speech and other um, gifts and, and assistance, and the Monoids eventually took advantage of a certain conflict or certain disarray during the outbreak of the, the disease, the common cold that Dodo infected everyone with, and they, they took over. They became tyrants, arguably worse than how the Guardians treated the Monoids themselves. And it's a depressing... It's a cynical outlook, but I guess it's a... It's a, it's a speculative scenario worth exploring, albeit quite an ugly and insidious one. Well, one that assumes the worst of biological life, I suppose. Although what's fascinating about this episode, if I may re spoil some things, are the, the attitude of the, the Refusians. The Refusians, re there's something about a solar flare, and the Refusians are now completely invisible, which is great for the production budget. And the Refusions have decided that they've been well aware of the Ark on coming to their planet. And as the human guardians had hoped, the Refusions are more than welcome to have the humans occupy the planet. And also the Monoids. However, they're still willing to let the Monoids and humans both occupy the planet. However, they have no tolerance for the Monoids' potential hubris and have the capacity to punish them for it if they see fit. The Monoids are a kind of tragic case. I hope... Maybe there'll be more depth added to them uh, to flesh them out in episode four, but I found it kind of depressing in that these creatures were just reduced to one-note villains because I really liked in episode two how one was very you know, cleverly and willingly helping the Doctor find a cure as though they were enthusiastic and wanted to help. I feel like this, this kind of <laughs> just has a depressing end, and I feel like... I feel like maybe this script could have been more considered in the hands of more experienced screenwriters in the science fiction genre, perhaps. I don't know if Paul Erickson or, or Leslie Scott were were overly versed in, in the field. In any case, it's a very satisfying, a genre-heavy episode of Classic Doctor Who. Tune in next time to witness the sped-up conclusion of the arc, if you're so inclined.